So dear students, today we are going to start working capital investment policy. In our previous class, we have covered all the elementary elements of working capital. We know what is gross working capital, what is net working capital, and also about working capital policies. We know the trade-off between profitability and liquidity. Today we will add more. We are going to start working capital investment policy. But the subject matters are not that much critical. It's easy. If you just listen and watch, I hope that you don't need to study a lot. So from previous discussion, we can make the summary of the importance of managing and accumulating working capital. So what are the importance of starting working capital, managing working capital, accumulating working capital? We can divide all the importance into two different sentences. One is to keep cost under control. So we want to control our cost. Another one is to keep risk levels at an appropriate level. You know that there is a relationship between liquidity and profitability. So we want to maintain the level of liquidity in a level where our risk will be appropriate. We don't want to take high risk or even we don't want to keep that much liquidity or excess liquidity that will reduce our profitability. And that's why we need working capital investment policy. So what is working capital investment policy? We can say working capital investment policy refers to the determination of the amount of working capital to be invested in various current assets, namely cash and bank balances, inventory, account receivable, bills receivable, marketable securities, and prepaid expenses. For what? Again, go back to the previous two sentences. For keeping our cost under control. There is an example. You can control your inventory. You can control your storage of inventory. And these way you can control your cost. Again, why capital investment policy, working capital investment policy? For keeping risk levels at an appropriate level. How? Maintaining a level of liquidity that will reduce our risk and also maintain our target profitability. We don't want to lose our profit. We don't want to maintain that level of liquidity that will be idle. And we have enough discussion regarding the calculation of networking capital. We know networking capital means current asset minus current liabilities. But we want to know how to determine that risk levels using liquidity, using the statistics relevant to the liquidity. You know the ratio, I know. You, you studied some other finance-related courses where you have ratio like current ratio. So here we can use the concept of current ratio to determine whether one company is riskier than another or not. So we have very simple example, elementary example from where we can understand the risk return trade-off. If you take high risk, obviously you will have high profit. If you take lower risk, your profit will decline. So what is the solution? The solution is we have to make a trade-off between risk and return. We want to take that much risk or appropriate level of risk that will ensure our target return. So we don't want to take high risk for high profit, or we don't want to 
uh, minimize our risk in a level where our profit will be very lower. That's why we need trade-off. How can we calculate current ratio? That will help us to know about liquidities, current asset divided by current liabilities. So in this example related to farm one, you see that we don't have marketable securities. So we have $200 current assets. And also you see that we have information about current liabilities and we have, we have current liabilities uh, on the right hand side, if you see, it's uh, only 100. You see the short-term debt is only 100. So here, short-term debt is only 100. Yeah, have you seen the short-term debt? There is only 100. Yes, sir. Yeah, so you can easily calculate current asset divided by current liabilities and current ratio is two. And there is a common standard. We practice uh, as a common standard what current asset should be two times higher than current liabilities. Uh, uh, but it's it's not common for every funds, but we practice this. Now see another uh, organization, Farm 2. Here you have marketable securities of uh, 200. I have, I have seen that here you have a marketable securities of 200 and then you have other current assets of 200. So your current assets level is 400. So you have a new level of current assets that is 400 for the farm two. And also you have current liabilities of 100, short term debt is 100. So it's current ratio four times. Now we can say which farm has high liquidity, farm one or farm two? Which farm has high liquidity? Farm, farm two. Farm, 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 two. farm two, because current asset is four times higher than current liabilities, four times than current liabilities. In case of farm one, what was the position of current ratio? It's two. So if you compare to farm, farm two has higher liquidity. It means what? It means farm one is taking more risk or farm two is taking more risk? Farm, farm two. two is taking two risk. Uh, farm two is taking more risk. No, 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 no. You're wrong. Farm two has high liquidity. So high liquidity means they're taking lower risk. And farm one has lower liquidity. It means they're taking risk. So if you compare risk, that case is farm one is taking high risk because current ratio is showing uh, result two and here is four. But in terms of return on asset, we can calculate return on asset uh, we know the formula is net income divided by net assets. So if you see in case of farm one, uh, what is return on asset? Return on asset, net income divided by assets. So what is the net income? It's 90 and divided by assets. How much assets they have? Total assets, 1000. So return on asset is 9% for farm A because we are trying to set or find out the relationship between risk and return. So farm one is taking high risk and the return is 9%. Now see about farm two. Farm two's current ratio is four, we know. And what is their return on asset? Again, the formula is net income divided by total assets. So what's the farm two's net income? It's, it's 95 from the information. And what's the total assets? It's 1,200. And you see that return on asset is 7.9%. Now you see that. Which farm is taking more risk? Farm one. Farm, farm one. one, sir. And which farm has higher return on assets? 
farm one farm, farm one so it means if you take more risk you will have more return if you take lower risk you will have lower return so when we study working capital management we're studying working capital management to set or to have a trade off between risk and return we know that if we take more risk, we will have more return. But still, we want to take that much risk that we can afford. And that will support us to get our required rate of return. We don't want to get that level of return. What is really risky? So we can draw a conclusion here that in case of farm one, you have higher return on asset and you are taking more risk. How? You have less liquidity. In case of farm two, you have lower return on asset and you have more liquidity. It means it's less risky. So this is the relationship between risk and return. High risk, high return. Low risk, low return. High risk, means you have less liquidity. Low risk means you have high liquidity. Is it clear from the calculation? Yes, sir. So this is risk return relationship. If you take more risk, you have more return, less risk, less return. So we are talking about working capital investment policy. So how many types of investment policy we can follow? One is known as relaxed current investment policy. Relaxed, what it means? It means you don't want to take risk. You don't want to take high risk. And for that reason, you want to keep high liquidity in the business. Whenever you need money, you want that money. You want to keep that money uh, in your business. So that's why this is known as relaxed current investment policy. What kind of policy it is? You have large amounts of cash and marketable securities and inventories in your organization. So whenever you need cash, you have available cash. This is called relaxed. So another one is called restricted current asset investment policy. Restricted means what? Where, where uh, you hold, you have, you, you, you are controlling your cash and marketable securities inventories. Controlling means what? You're restricting the amount of cash and marketable securities and inventories. You can say you are conservative. What kind of, you're, you're restricting current assets. It's worth that you don't want to have that much relaxed. Uh, you want to control your liquidity. You want to invest a lot of money uh, to make profit. If you make a trade off between these two, relaxed and restricted, you will have third one that is called moderate current assets investment policy. Moderate means in between, not too relaxed, not too restrictive. So how many types of investment policy we have? Three, relaxed current investment policy, restricted current asset investment policy, moderate current assets investment policy, or you can say relaxed working capital investment policy, restricted working capital investment policy, and moderate uh, uh, working capital investment policy. Uh, you can present using this kind of uh, figure as well, where you will see that relaxed means what? You see that relaxed means your current assets level is very high. You are keeping uh, uh, high current assets to make more profit. Your sales is growing, your current assets also growing. Another one is your sales is growing Current assets also growing, but not that much of relaxed policies, moderate, in between restricted and relaxed. So what is restricted? Your sales are growing, but your current assets positions are not growing that much, or you don't want to 
keep so many cash, so many marketable securities and inventories in the business. So you want to maximize your profit using lower level of liquidity. Sir, I have a question. Yes, of course you can. So, sir, considering the risk, so relaxed current investment policy is the less risky and restricted is the high risky one. Yes, absolutely or not, absolutely right. That is, that is, that is the way we are th you should think and all students should think. Relaxed means you are not taking that much risk. Restricted means you are taking risk. Moderate means in between. And this figure is really so simple. You see that sales are growing. So sales growth is safe. But current assets positions are changing. If you are high risk taker, that case is you will follow restricted investment policy. That means you will have less cash, less inventory, less account receivables, but you are making profit, you are selling. Your sales is growing in the X axis. So you are relaxed means for having same rate of return for ensuring same volume of sales you are maintaining high liquidity in your business. You have high cash, high marketable securities, high inventory, high account receivables. Yes, you are absolutely right. Most important, because today you have task. What kind of task? Task related to these part. So I will be slow and you have to keep your attention. Very important. You see that cash conversion cycle and its various stages. Think about this. Don't enter into the text first. Just think when you do business, you are not only selling your products or services on cash. You are also selling your products and services on credit. So you have cash sales, also you have credit sales. When you have cash sales, you are getting cash. When you have credit sales, you need to wait for getting the cash. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes. So that is called account receivables. So if you have to wait long time, what will happen? Account receivables will grow or your account receivable will decline? It, it will grow, sir. It, it will grow. grow. It will grow. So if you have credit sales and if you need to wait long time to get your money back, it means your account receivables are increasing. What does it mean? It means if you want to convert these account receivables to cash, you need longer period of time. Follow me, try to listen. Don't enter into the text. Just the way I'm talking, I'm discussing, try to understand this. Simple, we have credit sales, means account receivable more credit sales means more account receivable. We have no problem. More credit sales, more account receivable. We have problem where we are unable to collect account receivable on time. If we take long time to collect account receivables, if we need long time to get back our money, what does it mean? Our liquidity position will be hampered in terms of cash. You see that all the money we have invested on credit sales, more account receivables means less cash in our hand. Now think another way. We are not only selling on credit we are also buying on credit. We are purchasing raw materials on credit. 
and we have to pay. So when we buy raw materials on credit, it means accounts payable is growing. So when we sell on credit, we need to get our money back. So when we buy on credit, we need to pay our, we need to pay to the sellers from whom we have purchased on credit. Am I right? You see the two parts? We are also buying on credit and we have to pay. That is payables. We are selling on credit. We have to receive the money from receivables. So you see that there is a cycle. What kind of cycle? We need some days to get our money back. We, we have some days to pay to our uh, pay payables. Now we need to determine this days. How many days we need to convert account receivables to cash and how many days we have in our hand to pay payables. So these calculation are known as cash conversion cycle. So we need to know the various stages of cash conversion cycle. I have explained in my own way. Now we can check the textual presentation. What are these? There are five important processes involved in the cash conversion cycle, which are summarized as follows. And this are textual presentation. The first one, keep in your mind, purchasing raw materials and supplies on credit. What I have already mentioned, so thereby creating accounts payable. So you need money to pay these payable. So purchase have no immediate cash flow effect because payment is not made at the time of purchase. You are not paying now, but you have to pay in future. The number two, lever and other factory expenses are used to convert the materials into the finished products. So you see that I have mentioned one is payables, one is receivables. In between, you need more time. You need some time to convert those raw materials to finished goods. And this time, you have to pay wages. This time, you have to pay salaries. This time, you have to pay rent and other expenses as well. So how many days you must keep in your calculation that you are purchasing on credit, you have to pay, you are selling on credit, you have to collect, and moreover, you need some time to convert all these raw materials to finished goods. If you buy today and you cannot produce goods today and sell it for cash, you need more days. Number three. The finished products are sold on credit. That means account receivable. So you are not getting cash immediately. You have to wait. So how many waiting? One is you are buying raw material, so you don't need to pay cash. It's good. But after purchasing raw materials, you have to wait to transform, to convert these raw materials to finished goods so that you can start selling. And then again, you have to wait because you are selling on credit. So you are not getting cash. So you need to wait for production. You need to wait for sales. If your sales are on credit, then you need to wait for getting cash. Number four, the question of paying of accounts payable and other accrued operating cost like wages and factory overheads arises, which involves cash outflows. So you need to wait to convert your raw materials to finished goods, suppose 30 days, then credit sales. You need to wait to get your money back from the receivables, another 20 days. So 50 days, you have to wait to get cash. That means you must have cash 
or current assets that easily convertible to cash for at least 50 days to operate your day-to-day -day operation. Because you have no money in your pocket, you are not getting cash by this time. Number five, the last process arises when the question of collection from account receivable arises. This leads to cash inflows in the business. Now we can check these through these way. You see that? This is your cash cycle. How it works? What I have already mentioned, the raw material purchase. You need some time. If you place an order, and if you place an order now, you will not get the raw materials now. So you, have, you need some days, order placed, and a stock arrives. After that, again, you need some times. For what? You have to convert these raw materials to finished goods. Then again, you need some times. When you sell on credit, you're not getting cash now. You need to wait to receive cash. So you see the top side. You, 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 you check again. So when you, raw, you purchase raw materials, you need some time from order place to stock arrives. It's still not finished goods. You have to convert these to finished goods. So you need inventory period to convert these raw materials to finished goods. And once you have finished goods, you are not selling all the finished goods on cash. You are selling some goods on credit. So you need to wait again to receive cash from receivables. On the other side, if you buy these raw materials on credit, then you have some time to pay because you are not paying now. So what is, what is cash cycle? What is cash cycle? You see that. So the cash cycle, you can calculate in this way, considering all this. What is the cash? Your cash means long-term debt plus equity minus networking capital minus fixed cash, uh, fixed assets. So this way you can determine your cash position, long-term debt plus equity minus networking capital, excluding cash minus fixed asset. And you can determine your cash cycle in this way. How you can determine your cash cycle? This is your operating cycle. What is your operating cycle? This is your operating cycle from here to there. And you have to pay cash in this time. This is accounts payable period. Now, considering all this, you can determine your cash cycle means operating cycle minus accounts payable period. Again, you see, this is the total operating cycle. So from operating cycle, this is your total operating cycle. From operating cycle, if you just deduct these accounts payable period, you will get your cash cycle. So if your total operating cycle is 60 days, and if your accounts payable period is 20 days, then your cash cycle is 40 days. So you need working capital for 40 days. Are you getting all these points? That how to determine cash cycle? You have to consider. You have to consider. Uh, it is days. supposed to. Again, again from from here come from here. So you are purchasing raw material. Yes, raw material. raw material. So you purchase raw material. After purchasing raw material, do you think you can convert this raw material to finished goods today? Is it possible? No, sir. So can you stop business? Can you stop using utility? Can you stop paying electric bill, gas bill, water bill? Can you stop? Can you stop paying all this? No, sir. No. So you see that you need to operate your business. So you must consider how many days will it take to convert these raw materials to finished goods? So suppose you need, you need 
30 days to convert raw material purchase to finished goods. Once you have finished goods, how many types of sales you have? You have cash sales, yeah? And you have credit sales. So you have credit sales, credit. So can you collect money from debtors today? Morning you sold on credit and afternoon can you collect? Can you collect it? Is no, it possible? Sir. No, sir. No, so, sir. What you, so what do you have to do? You need some time. Time for what? Time for collecting money from those buyers to whom you sold on credit. So suppose for converting raw material to finished goods, you need 30 days. And for collecting cash from debtors, you need another 30 days. So now for how many days you need working capital? 60. 60, because you have to pay wages. You have to operate your business. You have to buy everything. You have to continue day-to-day -day operation. You have to pay different kinds of bills, electric bills, water bills, gas bills. So this is your operating cycle, operating, operating. You are doing business. So you are operating your business. This is your operating cycle. Now you have some advantage as well. What advantage? If you buy these raw materials on credit, you don't need to pay today. Have you got it? If you buy raw materials on credit, baki day. So do you have to pay today? No, sir. So suppose you have 20 days credit. What does it mean? 20 days credit means? Thank you. What does it mean? Pay cold working. So you have to pay after 20 days, not now. So here you need cash, you need working capital for 60 days, but you don't need to pay for 20 days. So really, for how many days you need cash? So for 40 days. 40 days. So 40 days is your cash cycle and these 60 days is your your operating cycle these 20 days is accounts payable period now we can calculate this we can calculate how can we calculate see you have some information have you seen the example this example is very important because your problems are related to this example. You are given first inventory. What is this inventory? And beginning and ending inventory means what? At the beginning of the period and at the end of the period. Business people, you know, you have financial year, you have information at the beginning of the year and you have information at the end of the year. Am I right? Yes, sir. So do you think it's always same at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, inventory will be the same? No, 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 sir. Sir. no. So these way you were given accounts receivable at the beginning of the period, at the end of the period. You are given accounts payable, beginning of the period, ending of the period. So when you have accounts receivable, if you have, if you have, if you have credit sales, if you have credit sales, and when you have accounts payable, if you have credit, credit purchase, and you are given also information related to net sales, 
annual given information about cost of goods sold. Considering all these given information, also you are given some other info information uh, if required, but based on all this information, now you have to determine your cash cycle. Can you remember cash cycle means what? Operating cycle and accounts payable period. I have used some example. Can you remember what was our operating cycle? 30 plus 30, how many days? 60. And, and what is our payable period? 20. 20. And, and cash cycle is? 40. 40. Same discussion now we are continuing numerically. For this, how many information we need? We need information about inventory. We need information about accounts receivable. We need information about accounts payable. We need information about sales and cost of goods sold. Now, what is our first job? We want to calculate one after another. You see, the first one is inventory period. Now come here. Now it will be clear. You see here, the first 30 days, what was that? First 30 days, what was that? The inventory period. Inventory period. Because you need time to convert your raw materials to finished goods. So this is your inventory period. And then again, these 30 days. The cash receivable period. Cash received from receivables. That is called account receivable period. But when you calculate, numerically calculate, kore bear kutta hobe, shutti shutti tirish din kina. Yes. And the third one, third one, what was that? Accounts payable period. What we, we say, it's 20 days. Kito shutti shutti ki 20 days na madhuke calculate kore bear kutta hobe. So now we are going to learn how to calculate inventory period, how to calculate account receivable period, how to calculate accounts payable period. And if we can determine these three, then what we can determine? Cash cycle. Cash cycle. So you have to remember why do you have problem? You are given all this information. Your job is to determine separately inventory period, account receivable period, and accounts payable period. Only then you can calculate cash cycle. So for this, we are going to do this. First, we are going to calculate inventory period. Then you see that we are going to calculate receivable period. Then we are going to calculate Operating cycle. Kichu ekta baad aache. Ki calculate kara hai niya kono? Cash cycle. No. Sir, payable period. Payable period. Again, you see, eto taradari bule ke le chul bena. Inventory period, accounts receivable and payable period. So here, we are missing payable period. So we need to calculate again, payable period. Now we can combine all this because we know that cash cycle means operating cycle minus payable period. How can we calculate? You need to remember first, so simple way, simply you can calculate average inventory. Average means beginning inventory plus ending inventory divided by two. So now you see that. What was our beginning inventory? Two left. Ending inventory? Three left. Now, how can you calculate this average inventory? Divided by two. Two, sir. Two luck plus, plus three luck divided three by two. Divided by two. Is it all right? Yes, sir. Now, remember the formula of inventory turnover. How can you calculate inventory turnover? The formula is the formula is cost of goods sold. What's the formula? Cost of goods sold. Good sold. This is cost of goods sold, not sales. This is cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Now we check 
really cost of goods sold is given? Is there any cost of goods sold? No, sir. Sir, last day. Cost yes, sir. Last day, sir. What was that? How much? Eight lakh. Eight lakh. Twenty thousand. So now you can calculate eight lakh twenty thousand divided by two lakh fifty thousand. This is inventory turnover. Now you can calculate inventory period as well. How you can calculate? You can use either 360 or 365. I have used here 365. 365 days divided by 3.28, you will get a result. Your inventory period is how many days? How many days? 112 days. What does it mean? What is the meaning of this? Sir, actor, inventory, actor, product, So, if you want to convert your raw materials to finished goods, it takes hundred twelve days. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, what's the second phase? What we have to do now? Receivable periods. Receivable period. Again, the process is same. First, average period. How can you calculate this? Beginning. Beginning. Beginning plus, plus. Plus ending receivable divided by two. Yes, so you see 160,000 and two luck divided by two. This is yes, sir. okay. Yes, and sir. then and then what do you have to do? Receivable turnover. Turnover, sir. And and this time, what we are using, you see, in case of receivable, we are not using cost of goods sold. Receivable is related to sales. Yes. Yes, sir. Cochon receivable high. Credit sales. Credit sales could yes, be. So we need to know about sales. How much sales we have? 11 lakh 50,000. So the formula is sales divided by average receivables. Sales divided by average receivables. The result is 6.39 times. What's the last phase? Receivables, period. How can we calculate? The process is same. 365 divided by 6.39. How many days we have? 57, 57, days. 57, days. 57 days. days. Now again, someone explain what does it mean? So it means that it takes 57 days to receive the cash. From? Receivables. From receivables. Again, go to the ugly pictures. Now you see, again, this ugly picture. So what is your operating cycle? Inventory period plus account receivable period. Taitonaki? Yes, sir. So we can calculate now operating cycle because we have already inventory period and receivable period. So operating cycle equals to inventory period, receivable As period. Received. So 112 plus 57, total 169 days. I'm not moving to the next slide. Before that, I want to ask you, now how can we determine cash cycle? Operating cycle is done. What's the next step? Accounts payable. So what we have to calculate now? Pay, accounts payable period. Account payables period. For what? She take a joke or one I can take about the book. Minus. Sir, minus. minus. The process is same again. Just see. Now we have payable period. Process is same. First average payables means beginning payables plus ending payables. Ending. Divided by 
two. Two. Then payable turnover. How can we do this? Cost of goods sold because we purchase raw materials at cost price divided by average period. So we have 9.3 times and then payables period. Where's the formula? 365 divided by payables down over. How many days now? 39 days. Can you calculate cash cycle now? Where's the formula? Operating cycle minus payables period. So what was our operating cycle? 169, sir. And what is our payables period? 39. So what is our cash cycle? 130. 130 days. You see? And yes, sir. based on these calculation, you are given two problems in the black box. Problems are not available in the classroom. In the classroom, I have created this assignment for submission purposes. After solving this problem, so that you can submit, you can attach. And that's why I have created. But I have already given these problems today's morning in the black box. How many of you have seen this in the black box? Sir, I have. Sir, I have. Uh, I have, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm giving, I'm going to provide you clues. Now I'm discussing these two problems and then I will stop. I will wait one hour for having the solution. So I am giving, I'm going to provide you clue. Clue, do you know clue? Hints? Yes, sir. Okay, now you see, what's the information you are given? Do you have paper and pen? Because you have to know all the hints and then yes, you can talk yes, with yes, the I'm going to provide you clue, hints, and it will take only 10 minutes to solve. So the first problem, the following data relate to a manufacturing company during 2020-21. You are given credit sales, how much? Four lakh, Four lakh fifty thousand. Purchase credit purchase. Three lakh eighty thousand. So you are given only one inventory, so you don't need to calculate average inventory. Am I right? Yes, sir. You are given cost of goods sold. Sixty percent, six lakh. Sixty percent of the sales. So you are given sales. How much you sales? So six lakh. Six lakh. Six and one. what will be your cost of goods sold? So 60% of it. I mean, if I multiply 60% with 600,000, then I will get the cost of goods sold. And what is your accounts payable? 1,45,000. Is it easier than our prior problems? Yes, sir. Because you don't need to calculate average again and again because you are given only one figure. You see that you are given uh, inventory one, you are given payables one, it's simple. So what do you have to calculate? You have to calculate cash conversion cycle of the company and also determine net working capital of the company. Now, what is the clue? Go to the clue first. Notice. Sir. Yes. Sir, accounts receivable zero uh, what do you think? You don't have account receivable here? Credit sales. Okay. Credit sales. Brilliant. Who said credit sales? So credit sales is your account receivable. You see that how many times I have mentioned that when you have sales on credit, that is your account receivable. So credit sales is your account receivable. Are you there, my dear student? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So what is the clue here? You need to know about cash conversion cycle first. So note it. Cash conversion cycle means operating cycle minus 
minus yes sir. minus accounts payable period accounts payable period then you need inventory conversion period how can you calculate here because you are given only finished inventory the finished inventory divided by cost of goods sold or cost of goods sold per day okay sir cost of goods sold per day per day sir note kara hocche to na hinch yes sir na hole abar bipote porle ami help korbo na ami kintu off hoye jabo ami jokhon student tasti ami off hoye jay tai na arek din diyechilam na yes sir yes, sir cash conversion yes. cycle te egon again ekটু bolben operating cycle minus hey my dear student see cash conversion cycle what it is operating cycle minus payables period how Payable. year go back here you see cash cycle means operating cycle minus Payable. accounts payable period tar age amra operating cycle calculate kora shikechi shekhane koy ta thake ki ki thake operating cycle ta alada kore na likhe ki directly kora jabe why not inventory period plus account receivable period minus minus tables period. period so the, the answer will be the same you can do it no problem okay sir okay sir so these are the clue so you need to calculate inventory conversion period finish inventory divided by cost of goods sold per day and then receivable collection period formula is receivables receivables sir, mean, yes sir cost of goods sold per day money 365 they divide for right that is that is yes yes very good 360 or 365 uh, you know some text they follow 360 some text they follow 365 so what you follow follow the one or that 360 365 don't do this okay Yes, sir. Now, receivables collection period. How can you calculate receivables divided by credit sales per day? Then payable credit sales total sales. You are given the total credit sales. Your sales are the total sales on credit, or you are given only those part of sales what you have on credit. In our previous problem, the total sales and credit sales uh, are both the same. So here you are given credit sales, receivables always related to credit sales. You don't need to think about cash sales. Uh, uh, cash sales are going to cut No, sir. No. Yes, sir. No. <coughs> Excuse me. And then payables period or sometimes we call these payable deferred period why deferred because we are not paying today no sir no sir the calculation is same what it is accounts payable divided, divided by, by credit purchase per day credit purchase per day and then cash conversion cycle what was the formula again sir Operating cycle minus minus uh, payable period. period. And how do you calculate networking capital? What was what is the formula? Current account minus current liabilities. Current account or current assets? Sorry, current assets. Very good. Now problem number two. Do you have paper and pen again? Because I'm going to give you the hinge. Kagoch column ki ashole at say? Sir. Yes, sir. Acha, sir. So the problem number two. The SOFO Corporation has an inventory conversion period. Inventory conversion period. Conversion period of 60 days. Inventory conversion period is given. You see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A receivable collection period. That is also given. Payables period that is also given. 
So what do you have to do? Is it a very tough one? Sir. No, sir. No, sir. So what do you have to calculate? Sir, proper. It's a cash conversion cycle, the cash cycle. You see, and then say, if annual sales are, annual sales are how much? If annual sales are 3 lakhs, 60,000. And the, this is cash sales? Credit. Accounts receivable. Now it asks, what is the average balance in account receivable? That is, you have to determine that what is your accounts receivable. The second, third question, how many times per year does Sulfo turn over its inventory? That means inventory turnover period. Yes? And then what would happen to Sulfo's cash conversion cycle if on average inventories could be turned over eight times a year? Eight times a year, then what would happen to Sulfo's cash conversion cycle? So here answer is given and you have to find out the question like this. So what is the hint? You need all this. The first, you must know what is your cash conversion cycle. You know the formula is direct because someone says, you see that I have I have showed both. Yes, you can calculate inventory conversion period, receivable collection period, minus payables deferred period. Now, the another question was average balance in account receivable. How can you calculate? You see that credit sales is given or not? Given, sir. Collection period is given or not? Given, sir. So divided by 360 or? 365. 365. Jara note to Tara Kuru Pasta. And then, what is the formula of inventory turnover? Sales, Sales divided, divided by inventory. inventory. So you are given the answer. You are given inventory turnover. You are given sales. Now you can easily find out what is inventory or not. No, no, no. Is it possible? I, I need my software. My dear student, is it possible to find out inventory from this equation? If you know what is inventory turnover and what is sales, then can you calculate inventory? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just solve it. And that is your task. You are given the time till 7.30 and you have one, uh, you have one opportunity for this solution. Uh, what is this? That you can solve these two problems alone and you can submit or you can make a group of two friends together and two friends together can solve two problems and can submit one assignment but you must mention both friends name and id